Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Fred Birnbaum, the Idaho Freedom Foundation. I stand strongly in support of HJM08. There's an old adage, in order to solve a problem, you have to properly define it. The reason we have an immigration invasion, as it was related by Representative Hawkins, is President Joe Biden has taken dozens of administrative actions to facilitate that invasion, just a fact. He ended the Migration Protection Protocol, also known as Remain in Mexico. I won't restate all of those, but the purpose of this memorial is to make it a priority of Congress to remove the man who should be held accountable. The buck stops with Joe Biden, he, President Joe Biden. He has done these things. It's documented. It started day one. He even telegraphed it during the campaign. I'm going to open the border. He's done that. So for people to say we need targeted immigration reform, if the current president will not enforce current laws, why would passing new laws fix that? He's not enforcing current laws. He's not allowed to do what he's doing. He's twisting the law the way he has twisted the laws that relates to student debt. He's doing that with immigration. So that's why this memorial is so important in calling for his impeachment. He is doing these things. It's a conscious decision. Secondarily, if you look at page two and you look at the precedence of the language, it says Congress should prioritize laws further tightening border security and immigration before funding the war in Ukraine. The problem we have in Congress, and this goes back to 1986, they haven't been able to agree so we're going to wait. So we've waited almost 40 years for agreement, and now they're going to get it in the next nine months. We have competing proposals. HR2 would do what the agricultural folks want. So the, the point is we need these two things before the third. And the third would essentially say if HR2 didn't do it, then we could address perhaps other needs of labor. But if you do not properly define a problem, you will not solve it. And this president needs to be held accountable. And uh, I see my time has expired, so I'll wrap up. And I would just say, though, we should not throw out the baby with the bathwater um, on those lines 40 to 42, uh, because that's not really the thrust of this document. The thrust is what's called for in the second page. Thank you, and I'll stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Birnbaum. Are there questions? Representative Scott. Thank wow. You. <laughs> you know, you haven't been in here yet this year, and I think that they're like, hey, we've got a shot at this guy. We're going to ask all of our questions. So I'll try to keep him just at the House Joint Memorial. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Birnbaum. I, I do appreciate the policy work that your organization does. Um, my question is, this we, we were told that this is contrasting with another memorial. Can you tell me what this does that the other one doesn't do? Mr. Birnbaum. Mr. Chairman, Representative Scott, that's a great question. So for the edification of people in the room, there's Senate Joint Memorial 102, and this is House Joint Memorial 08. And this one does what we've talked about, which is calling for the impeachment of the president, passage of HR2 as the priorities. The other joint memorial, in contrast, has a lot of very good language in the introduction. But if you look at the concluding paragraphs, it says just one thing, targeted immigration reform. It says it twice, targeted immigration reform. That's fine. But what you have and the problem we have right now is Congress passed the U.S. House H.R. 2, which is targeted immigration reform. On the Senate side, we'll call it the Langford, Senator Langford of Oklahoma, the Langford Compromise, which included money for Ukraine. And, and as uh, the gentleman from the Farm Bureau alluded to, it allowed thousands of people to stream into the country every day before anything was done. So this is the problem with the other memorial. It just basically continues the charade that's been happening for nearly 40 years. It might be very difficult with 100 senators and 435 representatives representing 50 states, practically evenly divided, to get an appropriate level of compromise on targeted immigration reform. So we're going to wait another for another 8 million people to come in? No. The president, under current law, any president, and we can see the contrast between 
President Biden and President Trump, under current law, if the president did everything they wanted, they could reduce immigration to a trickle. They wouldn't stop it. And then we could have a discussion about H-2A visas. That should be the priority. And that's why this memorial is better than Senate Joint Memorial 102. Uh, Representative Alfieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Birnbaum. Good morning. Uh, I wanted uh, to uh, ask you about um, you made reference to uh, lines 40, 41, and 42 about uh, cheap immigrant, uh, which is offensive to some. The term cheap immigrant labor, um, I wondered if you might address that. Mr. Chairman, Representative Alfieri, uh, that's a fair question. And I, I guess I would say to this committee, um, the drafters of this didn't intend to offend. It's a fact. If you believe in the law of supply and demand, if you increase the supply of something, the price goes down. And so it's very, I mean, I will accept at face value the statements of Mr. Narabout and others that that's not their primary motivation. However, if you look at the totality of immigration over the last few decades, and there are a number of academic economists who have more immigration suppresses wages of people at the bottom of the economic spectrum. You're bringing unskilled labor to compete with unskilled labor. So it does depress wages, and maybe it doesn't to some, to some extent in ag because the demand is there that some people who are native-born don't want to fulfill. But I think if you were to look at the construction industry, there's no doubt that skilled carpenters made more than they do now before we've had a lot of immigrant labor go into the construction industry. I know people who left that industry who made very good wages adjusted for inflation before the, the influx. So I would say, you know, the, the point isn't whether those three, two words are offensive. The totality of this memorial addresses the overarching issue. And I don't think we should get hung up on that. If, if people would like an apology for using the word cheap immigrant labor, I mean, that's fine. But I would suggest to you that it is more important that we send the overarching message to our congressional delegation and the president that you are accountable for what is happening. And that's why this is a superior memorial to the other one. And this, these two lines should not be used to distract from that issue. Representative Barbieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Birnbaum. I'm, I'm the, obviously the issue is pretty, pretty complex when we start addressing the, the needs of the, the agricultural industry. Uh, is there, in your mind, is there confusion or is there conflation with respect to the idea that we need a, 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 an appropriate immigration policy to let uh, temporary workers in and what is actually happening on the border in terms of just being wide open. Are these, in your mind, two different issues and therefore that's why we have to go toward the president and the enforcement mechanism? Mr. Perman. Mr. Chairman, Representative Barbieri, uh, that's a very good question. So I think the, the whole notion behind the H-2A where people come temporarily, uh, that, that actually goes back to World War II. I'm going to mispronounce it. I think it was called Bracero Program, Strong Arm, because so many men during the Second World War were obviously fighting overseas. So yes, I think there is a conflation between the needs of seasonal agricultural work and maybe even year-round work for the dairies and, and this fa the fact that the border is wide open, letting millions in. And by the way, the millions we've talked about, we haven't really even discussed the getaways because when you flood the ports of entry with people, it's gonna be much harder for the border patrol to protect all of us from the people nobody wants here and who aren't interested in working. They're here to deal drugs or to do other things. And that's just a fact. So yes, I think there has been a conflation and, and that uh, the needs of agriculture are legitimate. And, and the seasonal programs, like I said, that has a long history. But that should not be the overarching issue. The overarching issue should be the president's conduct these last three years to facilitate an open invasion of thousands of people streaming across the border. Thank you. Representative Gannon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Birnbaum. And, uh, we miss you. We haven't seen you here <laughs> lately. But... Um, 
but uh, <laughs> I wonder if you're open to amending this uh, resolution to include a call for removal of the Speaker of the House as Speaker of the House because he refuses to hear a bipartisan bill that passed the Senate with more than a 60 vote margin. He's put the bill in his drawer. He's obstructed the legislative process. And by doing so, we have no resolution, no solution, and no democracy in the United States Congress. Would you be interested in uh, including that in your resolution? Well, I think, uh, Representative Gannon, that probably should be directed at the bill's sponsor. Um, so do you want to hold that question for the bill sponsor? Bill sponsor, you might be prepared to answer that, okay? Could I comment briefly You're on welcome that? to comment on just, that. Just on the Mr. Chairman and Representative Gannon, I, I think there are a couple inaccuracies in that. So yes, the Lankford compromise with the Ukraine money did pass the Senate. However, HR2 passed the House. So you could just as equally say that we should impeach Charles Schumer, uh, Senator Schumer from New York for not even taking up HR2. And as the gentleman from the Farm Bureau acknowledged, they don't support the Langford Compromise simply because it still lets, instead of maybe three million streaming in a year, it'll be one and a half million. So it's not actually doing anything. It, it was basically designed to get money to Ukraine and Israel and, and support Taiwan with a fig leaf of border security. So we'll call it the fig leaf compromise. And I don't think you should impeach the speaker for opposing the fig leaf compromise. Follow up? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are you yeah. gonna add in, you're gonna add in now the, the president of the Ms. Senate? Well, well, I-, I We're uh, gonna go too far. You're gonna get Congress all involved now here. Yeah. Well, the, um, no, I was going to say that we don't impeach them because <laughs> I don't think they would just be removed. Right, uh, right. I mean, the. The, the body would correction change, noted mr chairman yep. would change their job title but um uh but uh i'll just leave it at that and save the question for David. okay sounds good and next